Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the input settings, add action and access mapping nodes. We're not going to jump into our example first. We're just going to show these nodes, explain how they work, and then walk through it. These have some weird quirks that I will discuss in regards to playing in the editor, standalone mode, and then package mode, but I will cover them as well. These nodes are designed to allow you to add mappings to our input settings, only inside of Blueprints. This is something that was added in 4.17, and it gives us the ability to actually change our input settings at runtime without needing to resort to C++. These things will take our input settings. So if we go to our project settings, engine input, and we can see our input settings here, and it will alter them. You can either add new action or access mappings or modify existing ones. And I'll show you both of those here in a second. For example, we're going to modify the jump. You can see our jump has four things, some gate pad buttons, motion controller buttons, and spacebar. Let's go back to our settings here. We're going to go and run our example, and you'll see it says spacebar. That is one of our action mappings. I'm grabbing it using the get action mapping by name node, and I'm breaking it apart just so we can show the first one. So we know that the spacebar is a valid value. And if I go ahead and hit play and hit space, spacebar works. Now here's the add action mappings node. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up. It's going to take as the target the get input settings node. Just go ahead and run get, you know, you can right click, get input settings, and it's going to show up. And you're going to hook it up, and that's going to be the input settings in the engine. It's going to take in a key mapping. If we disconnect this, you'll show it needs something inside of it. And it's going to take a force rebuild key max boolean. Let's hook this up. I'm using a simple make mapping struct node. This is just a simple node that make input mappings right here. And it allows me to put in the action name, the key, any modifiers, and then output it into my node. Now, for this example, I'm using this, but you could always get your key from somewhere else. You could accept the input using like an input key selector widget, any way to get something from your player. And then you can make the input action key mapping node and then plug it into here. Or you can output it from something that outputs this. But for my example, we're just going to use this. We're not going to use any modifiers. We're just going to use the U key. We're going to make this mapping and add it to our list. Now the force rebuild key maps is enabled by default and should probably should be unless you're adding a bunch of them and then you want to rebuild it once you're done. This is helpful for preventing duplicates and to make sure it's always up to date. Now here's where the weirdness and complicated part comes into play. There is another node called save key mappings, but I don't have it hooked up and that's on purpose for now. Let's go and just run this. We're going to go ahead and see spacebar. Now let's escape out and we'll run it again. You'll notice we actually see U. The reason we see U is, if we go into project settings, well look, we actually added U as a key mapping. Now it does it in real time, so let me remove it. We'll run our example again. It shows spacebar because we're getting the value before we add it, and I hit spacebar and we can still jump. But now I'll push the U key, and the U key allows me to jump. I can escape out, hit play again, and hit the U key, and the U key allows me to jump. This allows you to add an action mapping to either an existing action or a new action, and it puts it on the list and you can use it. Now, let's name one test action. We'll call it test action. We'll go ahead and go into our project settings and we'll remove that. We'll go ahead and go into here, test action U, and we'll go ahead and hit play again. I can jump with the space bar. I can't jump with the U key because it's no longer mapped to jump. The U key does nothing because I'm not actually using test action anywhere. But if we go to our project settings, what do we have? Well, we have test action and it's mapped to the U key. I created that just now by using the add action mapping node. Access mapping works the same way. You just make an input access, you add the access mapping, and it'll go ahead and add it to our list. And I can quickly show you that here. We'll just go ahead and jump off of here. We'll go ahead and add a new one. We'll call this one, we'll call this one a test access. We'll set its key to, uh, b -b 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 we'll set it to 7 because 7 is easy enough to remember. And it'll have a scale of 1.0. We'll go ahead and save. Uh, we need to actually target the input settings. There we go. 
We'll go ahead and save it. We'll look at our project settings. You'll notice there's nothing called test access. We'll run this. We'll close it down. We'll go back to our project settings, and there we go. Test access bound to the key of seven. That's it. It's really simple. As long as you can get a key in here, you can go and add it, and it will add it to your list. Now, here's something to note. This is where I said it gets a little weird. We did not call save key mappings. You notice it says flush the current mapping values to the config file. By default, if we look at our project settings, up here you'll see these settings are saved in default input, which is currently writable. When you are using the editor and you use these nodes, it will write to the editor file this default input immediately. That's something to note because if you actually build this project and you don't use the save key mappings node, it will not actually save it out. You actually won't get it. You need to use the save key mappings node and you need to target your input settings. So we can duplicate this, for example. You need to do something like this. After you're done adding or removing or changing any of your mappings in order for a standalone build to save them out because a standalone build actually has its own config file. So if we go to, let's go to my desktop and find my input mappings. Here's my input mappings. Here's an example I've built out and inside of its saved folder is a setting and we have our input in here and you can see here's my input settings. And you can see earlier in my example, I did actually do a test action using the U. I built this out and I tested it. It will not write this file out to the local save unless you actually tell it to save the key mappings. So that's something to note. If you run into a problem where you're like, well, it's working in the editor, why does it work in standalone? You're probably just not saving out your key mappings. This is a required node in the final product, so you might as well just hook it up and use it at all times. It may not seem like you need it because, hey, it's working in the editor, but it's required. And that is it. That is our add action. Sorry. Yeah, I'm in the add action. Yeah, our add action mapping node and our add access mapping node. They take in the input settings as the target. You need to put a key map in there using either something like an input selector, any variable, any value, any way you want, even the structure creation for making them put it into the key mapping, and then go ahead and save it out. So that way it will save it, and then now you can now use it. And that's it. That is our add action and add access mapping nodes.